Yo, what is going on guys? It is your voice so here with a video here today bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial it's a very own cool clean super clean simplistic text effect tutorial um, So yeah, basically today's just gonna be a video on really helping you guys out We've been doing a lot of streams lately of course right and all the portfolio reviews that I've been seeing a lot lately have been you guys just kind of like slacking in the development of making a clean text effect nothing has to be super out there nothing crazy wild just something very clean something very simplistic and just something that can be a default thing you can go to and kind of have that handy and get it like down very quickly because these things are not going to be hard whatsoever, I promise that. So as you can see right here, right, I also have a PSD in here. I use my Slim Nines PSD. So this is the example I have over here, right? This is the left one over here, right? It looks really good. I also, it does have like a little bit of an offset blue, uh, like offset white blue hue to it. So it's not just pure white. But as you can see, it looks really good no matter if you put it in the center and if it, in its own space. It has that really nice hold of a, a, of a text effect that it grabs attention as well as still very clean and simplistic and whatnot, right? And then you have the word effect here that we have in the middle, right? And then it just kind of looks like very nice and clean. It also holds its space as well because of the backing and the inner shadow on it and stuff like that. So it's not hard whatsoever. And I want to show you guys some of this stuff because I think it's going to come in handy for you guys a lot for the people who are doing like nice and simple headers and or headers that might look like this and I have a lot of geometric shape on. It, and then they just slack and kind of lack and don't know where to go with with the text effects. So hopefully um, you guys enjoyed this one here today, enjoy this video here today, and uh, the text effects. So of course, if you guys want to hit 200 likes on that video, you can see down below, which will most likely be the, I'm going to probably make a little t uh, texture, excuse me, not texture pack, text effect pack. Um, kind of shows you guys like a little bit step by step and it's a little more easier than just by wa watching the tutorial. But, um, but yeah, just all you gotta do is leave a like on the video and all that cool stuff. Anyway, let's get on with the video and I hope you guys enjoy it. And hopefully you don't make it, I want to make this a little bit shorter because I always go too long. So let me stop talking now and let's go ahead and switch it over. And, uh, yeah. All right, guys. So we're going to start off with the little text, uh, text for the text effect. Okay. So we're going to do the one that has the text right here first. Um, so firstly, what I'm going to do is quickly just write this out first. Um, little quick little things this is called gang of three the font is called gang of three if you guys probably watched any of my uh, text uh, excuse me, What do you call them font packs? Um, then you probably definitely know about this Um, so yeah keep in mind as well that do you see this little backdrop here? We have going on behind the uh, the white which is like more of like a darker bluish kind of tone going on here Be in mind that we I do have this little 3d value to my text and I really do love how it looks but don't keep you don't have to keep this in mind Um, you can personally just use the the text effect on its own by using the layer style itself however um, the point of this video is just kind of like housing your text and giving it that space, but also making it clean so it's not in the way. And just so you know, just just point that out there. You don't have to do you know the whole backdrop as well. And or you if you have a different thing you can do it with, go for it. You know what I mean? If you have a different idea. Anyway, so I have my text written out and all that good stuff. So if you guys did not know, if you press Control T, of course it's the free transform. You guys already know it's the same thing. You guys move and around and whatnot. But uh, it also gives you the option when you have, uh, actually have the selection up, uh, right where your you know your OK and your cancel button is. If you go to the left of this, this is your little warp tool, your bend tool, basically, right? So in this tool here, you guys probably already know. If you guys don't know, if you don't watch a lot of my videos, I've used it you know a couple times, at least three or four times in my videos. Um, but if you have, uh, you see custom, we don't have custom, but we have arc, right? <clears throat> you see this little uh, square right here. If you click on this, this is where you want to move it and kind of like have different, you know, you know, I guess bending in a different ways. So this arc, and you can have it on top or bend toward the bottom. And if I want to go ahead and just show some, some, some like where like the lower arc right here, have more of like a shield kind of concept, which looks pretty cool as well, right? And uh, if you want to have something like a bulge, which I use a lot, uh, just saying like this one right here. If I just squeeze it in a little bit, it kind of has this really awesome sort of like. I don't know, it feels like almost like a video game, like one of those app, you know, kind of like games that you see with like the text and whatnot with the right font. It looks really cool this way as well. But this one that I ended up using, if you, by the way, you can just press Control T again, bring this back up, and it'll give you the same exact options. You can also change your bend areas like this if you guys want to. And uh, where it kind of like, you know, might specify where you want to go from, I guess, perspective wise. So be sure you mess around with this stuff as well up here too, because it does, you know, it works out very, very well. So I'm going to go back really quick. <clears throat> Control T bring this up and the one I use was shell lower so this one here I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit more and I want to have that really cool sort of flat almost like it's like you know kind of curling up its its legs in the bottom so that's the font uh, excuse me the warp that we're using in today's video okay so once you have your warp set and you want to do the 3d stuff here this is where it gets kind of fun right it also gets kind of tricky as well so let me just show you guys really quick right so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press ctrl J on my keyboard to make a duplicate if you can do that uh, let's just put this so oh, I'll keep it here. I'll keep it in the in the in the frame and whatnot. Um, Control J also it makes a copy, so it's gonna put it above it. Now, if you guys really want, you can hold Alt, click on the layer itself, and then drag it below the layer. That'll put it below the layer and make a copy quickly as well. So it doesn't matter which one you guys do. Basically, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy, and on the copied version below the actual front text, we're gonna make this color a little more darker just so we can see it originally really quickly. Okay. 
um, because it, you have to change the color twice anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this down so you can see the two different colors. Now, one way that people just do is simply just drag it down. I've been doing this a lot lately, just dragging it down, fixing little corners that need to be fixed. However, you can get more depth and a really cool perspective if you went to Control T, right? Besides just moving it down, which is what I did. <clears throat> We're gonna hold Alt and Shift, click on the corner here. I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit more. So I'm gonna say to myself, what looks fairly good? And I'm also, you know, kind of referencing what's going on over here. And I think this looks pretty good, kind of like right here, I think. It has a lot of depth in here. If we want to, we can make this maybe a little more bigger this way, or maybe a little more shrink this way, right? So once you kind of have this little area here, you're going to say to yourself, all these little empty spaces, something like, you know, what's going on over here, all these empty spaces right here, you have to definitely fix that to have this really good cleanliness to it. So there is a tedious part when it comes to text effects and whatnot, but something like clean like this, but they excel and they look really, really good on your actual banner design. So let me just show you with like two letters and I'll kind of pen tool or simply speed art it uh, right before your, your eyes, you know what I mean? And like speed it up a little bit, okay? So first thing you're gonna do is right above your little layer that you had a duplicate of, right? We're just gonna call this uh, backing, okay? backing for the text and we're going to go ahead and just make a new layer okay on this new layer we're going to be using the pen tool so that's going to be uh pressing p on your keyboard to bring up the pen tool and all you're pretty much going to be doing is just filling in these spots here okay so if you have never worked with 3d text i guess what you can do is just prepare to type in 3d text in uh google and i uh, kind of figure out that kind of method because really i don't really think about it too hard i just kind of say i'm gonna start off at this point here i'm gonna pretend that i know where this point is over here and the effect that, that the e is over here so i'm gonna click over there and kind of finish that there so i'm gonna say this little down part on the e here i'm gonna pretend this is right there and i'm gonna click right over here so you know what I mean? i'm just kind of like referencing it so let's say this uh this start point over here if you guys would just basically match the two duplicates so on the e right here would be right here for this duplicated part so i'm gonna click over there right but i'm also gonna make sure that this is all filled in right you see how it's all filled in and let's say all this empty space is going on over here i'm gonna fill it in too so i'm gonna go around that and i'll make another uh copy of it excuse me i'm gonna excuse me connected is what i meant to say okay right so we have that connected let's just say now we're going to go ahead and fill this part here let's say this curve here i want to match it with this curve okay right and then we're going to go uh up and then connect that and all the way by the way the way i'm making new uh like pass on the same thing i'm just holding what well, i'll do it right now right i'm going to click right here i'm going to connect it to over here and i'm going to connect it right now and i'm press control click off the actual canvas and it'll make me basically make a uh <coughs> basically cancel the uh, current correct connection that we have going on here right so i'm gonna do one more so click here kind of fill this uh little triangle space here don't get mixed up with all your other blue ones all the other pen tool uh, blue lines here i'm just basically clicking over here copying the same sort of like uh direction i guess you would say where the actual text is going and clicking in the same spot roughly right right the point the point where the f is go around filling all this space in something right here as well click this point same point as this one click this go all the way around and we'll say click this point and connect these points go all the way around kind of thing and you're just gonna be rinsing and repeating this until you do all the actual letters together so uh i'm gonna do that right now with speed art for you guys and let's just do this really quick All right, cool. So we basically finished off little pencil parts on each of these letters for the E, the F, the F, the E, the C, the T, right? So basically all we're gonna do now is on this new layer, we're gonna right click. And the reason why I made the color darker, by the way, for uh, the, the secondary duplicated text for the backing is because when I right click, when I press fill path, drop down, use color, right? And we're gonna select the, basically the same backing color as we selected before, and we're gonna press okay. We're gonna press okay. That way we can especially just quickly see uh, whether if all of our things look pretty correct. And as you can see, I made a mistake right over here right so you can see this right here i'm going to quickly just go ahead and pencil this as well just like so fill it in and uh, now it should be okay i'm going to delete all these paths right so now it looks fairly decent right so now it all looks connected so let me show you what that without it of course it kind of looks very loose doesn't look as quite as uh i guess cool and not quite as clean obviously right so if i click over here again you see all those uh spaces are filled in very simply as you guys saw it's kind of just follow the direction or you're good to go so now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna do the really quickly simple little uh uh what do you call it um my gosh layer styles there we go <laughs> jesus all right so 
<clears throat> of course, before I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically control click on the backing and the little edits that we made, right? Press control G. That way it makes a group for it. So we're going to have that as our backup. So we're going to press then control J to make a duplicate of it. And then after we have control J, make a duplicate of our uh, group here, we're going to press control E. So then it merges everything together from that back layer. So we're going to have that as the backup, right? And then we have our actual uh, backing layer all connected in one so we can put a layer style on it without having any worries so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to effect here i'm gonna double click on this and we're gonna go to gradients and i already believe i have a layer style here selected i do so sweet let me just run you guys down with this little uh layer style i have already connected so you guys have the same exact one that i use in my preview so <clears throat> i did use a bevel and emboss so basically that gives you that really cool sort of sharpness to it so i didn't make it too in the in your face kind of thing i just kind of made it very loose and just kind of like just it's there you know what i mean so if i just uncheck it and check it back in you can see it's just that looseness that kind of looks this looks clean on its own right so you don't have to use bevel and embos, uh ben emboss whatever the hell you gotta say right but it gives that really nice little shadow on that which i love so very much so of course your style on inner bevel techniques on smooth depth set seven uh, 740 size at 6 90 angle with a 30 degree latitude and you use your highlight mode on screen this is simple plain old white and multiply simple plain old black and your passes are 36 and 10 for your bevel and embos right so the inner glow here is that little added extra little glow that kind of gives it almost like a sharpen in a way which looks really really dope so my blend mode for that is on linear dodge add now you can see it is a little bit pink hue i personally should have made a little more of a blue hue by just moving the hue scale right here Right, something like this a little bit more. So you can just see kind of what it adds right there. Looks very, very good. Opacity is basically, we're just going to say 50% to make it all even. And then choke at zero, size at uh, six, and you're good to go with that. We're not using center, we're using edge, by the way, of course. Right? So now, lastly, what I'm going to do is the gradient overlay, which happens to be the color. So you see me, I didn't worry about the color of the actual front face of the text itself because we just wanted to use a gradient. And with the gradient, I use a offset white to like an offset white bluish tone to it. So the hex code for this is C, D, D, a d f for the left hand shadow and then for the highlight color <clears throat> we have it just basically in the same area but just kind of like moved up a little bit more that's just not pure white but also it has that little bit of a textured uh color to it and the hex code is f zero f eight f eight uh f a excuse me right press ok and then I do have my middle sort of uh, balance little beam, beam, balance little bean, little thingy slider, right? Our color midpoint, there we go, cool, um, right? Just kind of like more towards the right-hand side, and I'm gonna press OK. And then I do have my style on linear and my angle at 90, and that's just basically that when it comes to the actual front face of the text, which looks really, really good, right? Lastly, of course, you can see my background color is a little more of a blue. I believe I have a, a gradient for that already saved. If I do not, we don't care. We can fix that really easily. Um, but okay, so this is close enough to it, right? So let me just quickly just move that so you can still see this one here, right? So my gradient for this one here, um, I'm gonna keep my right hand side, I believe. I'm just gonna make my left hand shadow a little more of a, I guess a little more darker, something like this, okay? So we're gonna have like basically a dark blue to a light, a lighter blue, right? So in this sense here, if you guys wanna change your color, I would just change it with the hue down here, um, keeping your hex point, uh, your hex code. Uh, similar to mine right here. So my hex code for this uh, blue that I'm using is 1B212F, and it happens to be a nice little dark blue, which ha like really helps as housing that white sort of front face color that you have. Let's see, even if you have original, uh, like an orange or something, let's just say, this would still work very, very well as well. So you just have to use like a nice, cool, um, how do you say, a complementary color, right? So that's for the blue here. And then for the right-hand side, for the lighter blue, we have the hex code being 282E3D. Press OK. Everything's still in the middle for the midpoint here. And if I kind of want to, I can make it a little more darker, a little more lighter, but for the sense of it, that's okay. This is a this is perfect. And my blend was on normal, of course, because we're using it as our actual main color. And with that being said, linear for the style and angle at 90. But be sure, I use a lot of reflected, by the way, as well. You can see how this looks as well. It looks kind of has like a, it basically takes whatever color is on the left-hand side here and it puts in the middle strip. And then basically the two lighter tones here or the lighter tone here makes it lighter on the top and the bottom. So if I just change this color really quickly so you can see it, for an example, you can see how that works, right? It takes that right, uh, that right hand highlight color and kind of makes it kind of uh, in the, like a sandwich, right? Um, so if you want to do that, you can do that as well in linear. Uh, excuse me, that's called reflective. Um, you can use angle, but I would just kind of say either linear angle or linear or reflective works best for this. So I'm not actually going to use reflective because it looks pretty cool. Press OK, and then the only thing I'm going to do after this is basically double click on this again. And with my gradient overlay still on, it doesn't really matter. We're going to go to inner glow here. We're going to take our color here and kind of match it. So I'm going to basically click on my backing layer. So if whatever hue color you had, like I said, if you had a blue, you can take your hex code where it is right here and then move it on the hue scale if you want to change your color for the backing. Otherwise, 
all you would have to do is just you know click on this again click on that hue scale or cl click on whatever that uh, backing color happens to be and just move it up just basically straight up right so I'm gonna basically move it straight up from where it was so click here move it straight up right give myself that really cool that's basically the highlight tone of the color of what's going on in the background here press ok Linear Dodge Add as my blend mode, opacity is at 50%, we're going to keep that for now. Size is going to mess this around about maybe like 13 or so, or even 16 looks pretty good. And our opacity is going to lower it down quite a little bit more, I'll say right about there. Looks pretty good. I didn't use any satin, but if you guys want to use satin, it does look really, really good if you have the right kind of like, you know, area to it. I'll say even like Linear Light 5 opacity with a pure black, distance at 50, size at 81, if you guys want to give that a shot, maybe that works for you. Um, just to see if that kind of works. I do. I didn't use it over here, but it does look really good right here. So if I just kind of show you guys, that is basically our effect. Also, I, this is a little more blue than this background here, but that's just simply by changing the gradient. We can fix that right over here, right? So uh, regardless, though, that is basically the first text effect for the text here. It looks really, really cool. Let me just put it over here on the example layer. And as you can see, it still pops very, very well off the background. Um, realistically, I would probably have to change this more of a blue hue to more of a darker uh, you know, no, non-color hue to it, but uh, regardless, it still looks really, really good. And as you can see, it just adds that, that it just gives the text its space. It's better than just having the, the you know, kind of like this sometimes. Like I said, this works sometimes. It's not for everyone kind of thing, the text effect itself. Um, some text effects just need just nothing, but you kind of see how like empty and feel, how empty this might feel for you guys. If you can see your designs in this aspect right here, you know, maybe it just needs a little bit of enhancing with something like this, excuse me, right? You know what I mean? You can kind of see what's going on. Like the difference in value just changes tremendously. So now, up next, I'm going to do a really quick version of the whole little icon one, which I believe is clean too. Right? Looks really, really clean. Let me just show you guys this one up close. You can see this little ripple right here. Very clean, very stylish. Let me just quickly show you guys this as well because it's important. All right, guys. So next up, like I said, it'll be the icon sort of logo version of the little text effect. So this should be a little more quicker because you guys kind of already know what to do, right? So uh, firstly, I have my logo right here with no text effect on it. And this is over here with the actual text effect on it. So if I just quickly put these in, you know, to perspective for you guys, you can see that it does give us, it gives it so much value. Like I'm saying, I'm trying to show you guys that comparison so you guys understand a click to have that click in your mind that goes, okay, so this is how I should kind of relate in the sense of text effects and or cleanliness and or adding something, adding value to my text so if I just kind of show you that with that right here right and then this is in the middle it just feels so flat it gets blended in too much there's nothing housing it and then you have something like this that just gives it that space that it needs so uh, hopefully you guys understand that a little bit more better right so firstly what I'm gonna do on my little uh, this is my logo here basically right my logo file here and firstly we're gonna do is just kind of match this little gradient here which I, which I already of course have a uh, version for you guys a gradient overlay blend mode of course normal will pass it on 100% because we're gonna be using the gradient itself as the color so on my gradient preset here this is the nice little blue sort of like offset blue hue that we're using as well or offset white blue hue that we're using as well so on the highlight section over here our shadow section over here on the left hand side we have the hex code d2d 9 f1 for this nice so you can see how close it is to white but it's not quite there um it has a nice little blue hue to it looks really good and so in the middle for the midtones here we're gonna go ahead and go with a e7 e e f f so it has that basically the uh the vibrancy or the how do you say, uh, I guess the saturation? What am I trying to say when it's like up in the hue scale? You know what I mean? But it doesn't have, it's not white. It just has that value, that higher highlight value, right? But it's not quite white. So it still has that nice little white, uh, excuse me, blue sort of offset as well, right? So on the right hand side over here, I have this being, uh, did I say the text, uh, the, the hue kill for this? Um, E7 E E F F would be that one over there. And then over here, I believe it might be the same one as this one, but if it's not, it's D9 E 3 F B. So they're basically very, very close. I try, I, th I believe they should be different though. Cause they should be very close, but different. Yeah. See how like very close they are in color, but different. It gives that really cool sort of like wave of color, um, which just holds a little bit of value as well. It just kind of shows, shows, you know, that really nice. So you see how like a little more lighter here, a little bit lighter here, a little bit lighter here kind of feels like a metal texture. And that's what I wanted to go for here. So once you kind of made your duplicate, uh, excuse me, your gradient overlay, you're gonna be making a duplicate, of course, so you can hold Alt, drag the layer right below it for the duplicate to make it sure it's under it already. And right away, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have my effects turned off. And uh, we're gonna also just kind of just mask this and make it a different color. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my lightness and lower it darker. Um, so that way you can kind of see it below my color here, right? So for this instance here, a lot of people choose to do this. They can just simply just drag it down below a little bit more. Let me make this a different color so it kind of, you know, it's, so you can just see it in it, all of its kind of full glory. Something like this. Let's rasterize it first. 
right? I'm going to change this color really quickly to kind of show you guys. There you go. A little more better, right? So, right? All I basically did was I dragged it down, right? I dragged it down. Usually, you can just go ahead and go ahead and pen tool like these right here, this right here, this right here. Pen tool this right here, which looks cool as well. As you guys saw, I had it, I believe, in group, group three. No, that's a different one. Right here, group three, where I dragged it downward. Um, but this one over here, I feel like I feel like it gave it more depth. Felt more very clean and more 3D in my eyes. Um, so essentially, all you have to do for this one, except for dragging it down, we're going to be doing here. Uh, okay. Except for dragging it down, we're just going to be pressing Control T, holding Alt and Shift, clicking on a corner and dragging it inward. Okay. That will give it that sort of like depth going inward. And that's what you kind of want to have here. So when I, once I kind of figure this out, I'm saying, okay, it looks pretty good. We're going to go there. I like that depth right there. Maybe even drag a little bit more further in. And uh, naturally, what you're going to do next is, of course, make a new layer. Take your pen tool. Like I said, we already kind of know what's going on here. Connect these sort of angles here. So at that point, or at this point, this point should be connected to this point over here. Right? We'll go around, make sure all that negative space is filled in. Let's take this point here, put that same point as this one. And uh, maybe even, like, have this connected as well. Having, like, somewhere like that. We'll see if that works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, connecting this point here. Just go all the way around if we choose to. And then right here. Right, so, uh, of course, it all depends on your logo. So all you have to do for me personally is fix what's going on in here. If your logo is, like, circular and has no sort of spacing, um, like I do, I have spacing in between my logo, you might not even have to do this originally because it's kind of, like, kind of does it on its own kind of thing, right? So if it was, like, a circle, obviously, you can match what you have. If you're, you know, lowering the ratio of the circle, you're just going to basically get a 3D circle originally, right? So that's what I kind of mean by that. But let's just see if this works. So basically, on this new layer, with my pencil, right-click, fill the path, drop down on the contents, click on Color, Select this here, <clears throat> press uh, delete path, and that looks good, but this right here, we're going to have to fix this. I forgot about this right here. Okay, and fill path, press OK, all in the same layer still, and ta-da, there's a sort of like nice little, um, you know, kind of a, uh, how do you say, a little more pers uh, 3D perspective going inward. So all I pretty much did for this one here is we're, of course, going to simply just merge these two layers together. I'm not going to uh, make a uh, back, uh, backup copy of it. I already kind of feel, feel we're good okay on this one, right? I'm going to double-click on this, and I'm going to keep the hue ratios that I have here. I know this is more grayer, but whatever. It doesn't really matter that much. So basically, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my inner shadow, and we're going to drag this up just a little bit, just about here. If you kind of reference, I'm going to say three distance for myself, uh, multiply blend, uh, blend mode opacity at 60% to make it all even. Uh, distance at 3, like I said, choga at 0 and size at 40. And then I have my contour being on the straight lines, and it should be at 0 noise. Um, just so I make sure you kind of have all that set for yourselves. But if you kind of click and unclick, you can see it adds that little bit of depth to it, right? And that's kind of what I'm looking for because if you guys know about shadows and 3D work and such, it kind of has this reference. So this is more reference, not you know, not exact, but this is reference and it still looks very, very good in my opinion. So if I, I want to even lower it maybe down to like 40% <clears throat> and say so this is okay. That is perfectly fine. Cool. So after doing my inner shadow, the last thing I pretty much did was use an inner glow, which for this, the opacity is going to be at 30%. Uh, linear dodge adds pretty much, of again, for the color you're going to be using is whatever color you use for the background, that darker color, just click on it, select it with a color picker. Take your point here and just drag it all the way up, basically over to the white section here. So it has that highlight value to it. And uh, it looks really even because, of course, if you made this pink, it'll have a pink highlight hue to it. So you don't you want to make sure it's as close as possible to whatever blue hue that you have here, which makes it look very cohesive. OK, so I'm going to press OK. And then on the blend mode, I said linear dodge add uh, opacity 30 percent. And then I believe zero choke size. And I'll just make this 15 for the size. Press OK. And there you pretty much have it. You have this really nice, cool, very clean depth like icon here. Um, lastly, here I have this little two little things here. What you're gonna have to do for this, um, keep in mind that you can't put certain things above a, uh, a gradient overlay. You can't put a, a clip mask overlay of something over a gradient overlay. You'll you know what I mean. Basically, if I were to put on a gradient overlay on this really quick, let's just pretend. Not this. This. Let's put a gradient overlay on it. Or just make a just just for reference. Look how cool that looks, by the way. Um, if I wanted to put a Excuse me, it's gonna work for this anyway. So I'll just keep this off for a second. Keep that in mind. We're, see how this one has gradient overlay? I'll use this as an example. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer, right? The steps are still count, so do the same thing. Make a new layer above your face of your icon, clipping mask to it, right? I'm gonna take my pen tool, give myself a very simple, what I pretty much did was a very simple curve like that, okay? So do that over here, 
or sort of, sort of like right below here and curved it going over this way, right? So give myself this nice little curve, go all the way around the top half, connect it. We're gonna fill this in here with this, like we're gonna click on the face again, and we're just gonna go all the way up to right, right about before it gets white, press okay, press okay again, and then delete the path. But as you can see, it's clipping mask onto something that has a gradient overlay. Okay, so like I said before, you can't have something clip mask over a gradient overlay. So what you're gonna have to do is, it doesn't matter, like I said, even though you have it clip mask already, press Control J on your keyboard to make a duplicate of it. And then right click on this layer and then rasterize layer style. And then you can have this as your backup and that'll be what it is. It's just gonna be a backup after that. So now you're gonna have that layer being seen over it, right? It's gonna be the same thing, by the way. Nothing's gonna be changing with your actual face. You just made it a, uh, made it one layer without anything on it, effects-wise, so you can put that actual highlight on it. So change your blend mode from normal to overlay. You can lower it down accordingly. Let's say around here is pretty good. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt, click on the layer, drag it below it. So of course, made a duplicate of it and made it below the layer. And it's gonna move it up a little bit. As you can see, it gives me that really cool little sort of like cascading little feel to it. If you wanna put one on a rotation, you guys can. And uh, that's pretty much the simple text effect there. So if I put this one here now, group this together. Oops, this as well, please, thank you. Put this in here. As you can see, it looks very, very, very clean. Of course, it has a little more of a hue tone to it. So of course, naturally, when it comes to this background here, you wanna make sure you fix it accordingly, but it looks really good. And I like it, and so hopefully you guys do too. I said it was gonna be short, but it was definitely not. But uh, I gave as much explanation uh, to, like I guess, words of wisdom in a way that can really help you guys out in the world of text effects because text itself can really truly make or break whatever you're working. Typography, it, there's a reason why it's a skill in design world, guys. It's not just about how good your picture looks. It's kind of how cohesive and how much your message is portrayed. So sometimes having text being so bland and or maybe too even, even too busy might be a very big problem for you guys, so be sure you kind of house that, like kind of house that, close it in, and like figure out what you want to do. So hopefully this text effect here can help you out with a lot of work that happens to be very clean. Like I said, you want to have a cohesive text effect to it, and hopefully this works for it. So by the way, all my tones were like mid tone, excuse me, like higher, sort of like had no color in them. This still works with color. I just want to show you guys an example of this one here because it looked better in the black background. I was gonna have I was gonna have this example as a black space, so I want to have a nice neutral sort of white kind of hue to it for this example. So of course you can still use color, so don't be too worried about you know trying that out. It's gonna work just as well. So if you guys end up using the text effect, please let me know, tweet me, all that cool stuff. I'll show you. I'll share my opinions with you guys. And as always, guys, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Two hundred likes on the video equals a secret down below, which will most likely be the like I said a text effect little pack, something like three or four little text effects in them. So you guys can help yourselves out with that. And of course, comment down anything you want to see me do below. Um, follow me on Twitter at SissoHQ and check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash SissoHQ for new premiums and packs as low as $3. And uh, as always, guys, have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Have a beautiful day ahead of you guys. I'll see you guys on my streams on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays around 1 or 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when I go live. And uh, yeah, with all that being said, that is it. SissoHQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. My apologies for stuttering, but naturally, natural.